If you're working with a larger company, chances are that that company has a brand sheet that they want you to follow for all the colors that they use in their advertising. <clears throat> in this example, I'm using Girl Scouts. One of your peers chose Girl Scouts as their client. And I want to show the cheat sheet that they put out from their company website. So scrolling down to the color, we have Girl Scout colors and the ones that they want you to specify. PMS355 is their Pantone color. CMYK is their printed, for printed products, um, their CMYK colors. I am magenta, yellow, black. So those are the numbers for each one of those colors. Then you have your RGB and then you have your hex code. So as you've learned in your lesson, PMS is so anything printed is the same as that color. So t-shirts, um, koozies, bags, they would use the PMS for that. The CMYK is for printed products. You can also use a Pantone color on printed products. So it would be CMYK plus the Pantone color at the end. And then you have RGB for screen and you have hex for websites. So I'm going to show you how to load these into your InDesign document to use in the one document and then also add it to your libraries to use in in additional documents over and over and over again. That way you don't have to load in your co your colors every single time you start something new. So I'm going to move this to the side so we can see both screens at the same time. I'm going to go to create new and I'm going to act like I'm just making a new document. My swatches are a little bit different than yours, but I'm going to remove these by holding down shift and drag them to the trash can. So in the swatch panel, I'm going to first hit new swatch. And something is going to come up. It's not, it may not look exactly like mine, but it's going to create a new swatch. If you look to the side here, it'll have like a little icon. Mine is a lab color, but if you look above, this is the CMYK color, and RGB will look slightly different from that. So you double click this little thumbnail, and the first thing it's going to tell you is what color type it is and then the color mode. We're going to change the color mode to add the CMYK colors for the Girl Scouts. So I'm going to go to color mode and choose CMYK. And you'll see that there's a percentage for each one of these. So looking at the Girl Scouts over here, we have 94, 0, 100, and 0. So that would be 94, 0, 100, 0. I'm going to do another one. So this would be just regular black and regular white. So going up here, let's start with that one, is... 80, 10, 0, 0. Next one is 0, 60, 165. For the other ones, I'm going to do the RGB version just so you can see the difference. So I'm going to scroll down here, duplicate it, double click. I'm going to choose RGB instead, and I'm going to put the RGB color in. So that's 171. 33 and 142. 171, 33, 142. And I'm going to also do the hex version of it. So doing the, we'll do this one as the hex. That's CC0000. So this one also comes up as RGB, even though I put in the hex code. But you see the little icon on the side that will tell you which ones are CMYK, which ones are RGB. It's important to know because if you're doing something that you know is going to eventually be printed, you want to use colors that are CMYK. If you, do, if you know it's for something that's never going to be printed, it's just going to be for a web, you would use the RGB colors. Since printers and screens don't read the same language, it's important to know this so your colors actually come out the way you want them to in your end result. So to add these to your library to where they will come up with every single new assignment, you can 
hold down shift and click all of your all of your swatches and hit this add selected swatches to my current CC library icon. So I named a new group PR445 test, but you can name you know whatever you want. You could name it Girl Scouts or whatever your client is. But I did it under here, create new library, and then I clicked PR4405 test. I'm going to do it just to show you again. So Girl Scouts, I'm going to hit create, and it comes totally empty. So you want to add content, and if you hit that, it's just going to be your fill color. But you can also go back up to it and do this again. Hold down, hold down shift and click add to my library. So now I have all the colors in my Girl Scouts library and I also have them in my swatches for the current project. So I'm going to close this document out and show you what happens now. So let's act like we are starting completely new. I have that stuff saved in my library. So I can go to create new and when I go to my swatches, it's empty again, just like the way it started. But if I go to CC libraries, mine is my Girl Scout stuff is all there. And I can hit any of these and say add color to swatches to where they come back in my swatches again. So anytime you want to choose more than one, you hold down shift and click all of them and hit add color to swatches. So I have them again here. So I don't have to reload those codes every single time. This is extremely helpful and it's a great time saver.